If I rule the world, one of the first things I will do is ban religion, politics and sports from family events or family dinner. And uh, I think in this case, a lot of people would actually agree with this because a lot of family relationships have been lost due to these three uh, subjects. First of all, let's talk about politics. It, it, it seems for whatever reason that when you, uh, politics is very divisive. A lot of people have their opinions, either right or wrong, they just feel passionately about something, about the subject. And uh, for the reason that a lot of this is often due to misinformation, but yeah, it doesn't matter, you just feel passionately about it. For example, some people will say, look, I am religious, and uh, uh, it says religious f fanatism can be rather dangerous, but l let's, uh, let's stick to politics. I'm religious, so I'm pro-life. And that's the end of the conversation. And from the other uh, side of the conversation, I say, look, we understand that we're also pro-life. And we, but we, we think uh, a woman should be able to decide you know, pro-choice as well, you know, in some cases, a child, or there, there have been miscarriages where it's not the woman's fault or choice, but it just happens. But then, no matter how you frame it from the other side, they are unwilling to uh, do anything about it. It's like, oh, it's a mandate from God, and I believe it. But these are the same people who are saying, yeah, they're pro-life, but they would... Uh, or send their children to war to go and fight and kill all the people in the name of whatever. So it seems that no matter how you frame it, everyone just sticks to their own position. And then uh, it becomes a very uh, difficult situation because the idea is not about trying to understand your family member, your uncle, your auntie, your, uh, I don't know, your dad or mother, eh, your grandfather, uh, anyway, a family member. You don't want to understand them. You just want to win a conversation. And uh, everyone is in a different echo chamber, so no one is actually listening to each other. And one of the interesting thing is that you could actually be pro-life and also be pro, uh, pro-choice. But for whatever reason, some people are unable to compute that and think it, no, is either one or the other. But humans are never, uh, uh, have never been one or the other. We are a bit a mixture. Some people can be really conservative uh, with maybe uh, when it comes to um, morals. But in other cases, they're very liberal. And then you think it's the same person. Yeah, but... Uh, there are different aspects or facets to a person, to a human. And then, so when you have the conversation, people want to win, humiliate your family member because you think, I've got, this I've got this covered. But sometimes you might be even misinformed if you're on the right or on the left. And no human is particularly uh, always left or right. Uh, I think one, one US comedian said, look, when it comes to guns, I'm a conservative. But when it comes to sex, <laughs> I'm liberal. And you get that. And that is why a lot of people say there is a lot of hypocrisy when you're talking about this subject where people are saying they're conservative, but then at the same time, uh, at the same time they're liberal. So a lot of, a lot of ins misinformation out there. And uh, that is why they say, it. I will ban, just to save family, I will ban politics from any uh a family dinner event or anything no one is able to if you if you start talking about politics you should immediately start having diarrhea that should teach you <laughs> all right the next reason that is religion that religion should not be part of any family event or um family uh dinner now this can be very difficult because the problem is that when you're born, you tend to just, uh, it's not as if you have a choice. You have to choose. No, you don't even have to choose. It is imposed on you to have a religion. That, that would be the religion of your parents or the religion around where you grow up. So 
Now, when you think about religion, and these are the same people, religious people, you have people who are saying, look, we shouldn't talk about religion, and I hate my parents' religion, or well, anyway, the religion because of child abuse. You know, it, it has been well documented that uh, a lot of religious organizations have, uh, there have been cases of child abuse, and they have not done what they should do. And then you have that. In such a case, it, it, they say only a few bad apples, not all, for example, all Catholic priests are pedophiles or, the, you know, uh, uh, engage in th those type of practices. But that is not what the conversation is about. They try, the, the conversation is, you've discovered the bad apple, but you did nothing to remove and make sure it never happens again. And that's what people have been against that uh, religion Organize, religious organizations have often uh, turned a blind eye to uh, abuse and then you have uh, uh, they often then make it very difficult for prosecution and just make it a pain for even the victims so in that case um, you have people saying why do you keep going to church or to your uh, place of worship when you know your uh, your religion actually has done that? And others are saying, well, in my part of the world, my church, nothing. there's nothing like that. They refuse to look at the bigger picture. And then you have family clashes where people are saying, no, I can't look at you right now. How can you continue to go to this church when you still you still have this? It's it just that people t tend to be able to compartmentalize the issue and not do anything about it because that's the way humans are. And all of a sudden, the family just breaks apart because we just cannot agree on this. Now, the next uh, thing about religion is where you can't choose your own religion. Some people say you need to make the choice, you need to make the right decision. They're saying you need to choose us or else things will go wrong. And within that scope, you have uh, the case of honor killing where uh, you're saying, okay, you can't marry someone outside your religion. And I'm taking, these are uh, extreme cases, but you get the conversation. You're having a conversation and you said, look, uh, are, 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 are you... You bring you brought us to to be raised in the West, for example. You have people from uh, the Middle East or uh, Asia. They come to Europe because they appreciate the stability and you know the possibilities available. But they still kept uh, the, the the values from where they came they, they came from, and then they try. The, the, your child is supposed to integrate. The child is integrating, doing well. But then you still want the child to uh, appreciate and value the same culture. Uh, but the child has been exposed to a different reality, and that is where the problem comes. Where it, there have been cases where. Uh, fathers, uncles, uh, cousins have been told to kill often a female member of the family for probably refusing uh, a forced marriage or marrying someone not from the same religion or in, not even from the same caste. So you get the idea that the uh, when religion is involved and uh, then you have a very strong uh, conservative culture it can be a mixture a, a lethal a mixture that would create discussions and uh, difficulty and it, this is not and that is why uh, some people actually have just said look i'm cutting my family off i, I don't want I, i'm just going to disappear i don't want them to know where i am and they've uh, my life has been better ever since and that's another reality why religion should not <laughs> be a subject of conversation or imposed in the family but that's a very difficult one i think it's even worse than politics now let's move on to the third point and that is sports it's just almost like if you grew up in a, in a sector in a neighborhood or in a community you're supposed to support whoever if you're from la uh, and you're into basketball you support the lakers if you're Boston, you support the, uh, the Celtics. And that's the way it is. And then you automatically hate the other side for, uh, because that's what you do. You hate them because, yeah, they are against you. It's, it's just like, um, you. Uh, okay, now to, un to understand this is you hear some people uh, just uh, going back to politics saying, look, um, you can be anything 
as long as, uh, especially the maggot crowd, was that you can be anything as long as you're not uh, uh, a Democrat. It's for for them probably an illegal immigrant who's um, on the conservative side is better than any legal uh, Im uh, immigrant who is a Democrat. You get the the black and white uh, thinking. Not is just either you for us or you're against us and that is terrible and then you have the same thing uh, like the Red Sox versus the New York Yankees uh, and in some cases they called them the Yanks just because well they're both all Americans but it's not the same thing they don't support the same uh, sport team and it's, you know they're against us and then you get the same thing in in the UK, where you have maybe people from uh, the South, uh, Arsenal, Chelsea, football clubs, mainly in London, and then you ha you have the neighbouring rivalry, but then they would gang up, uh, they would gang up against no uh, uh, people from the Midlands or people from the North. If you're say from Manchester or um, uh, Manchester City or uh, all these pl places, they are uh, they would be against people from the South, and it's just th those uh, type of rivalry. And if you have the misfortune of liking in some cases you have uh, in the same household someone would like Arsenal and the others will be a Chelsea fan or I don't know Fulham or Crystal Palace it doesn't matter the football club but it, it, it just creates tension and uh, sometimes if you're still uh, 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 the football club is still in London it, it is acceptable but then you go further up people just don't understand what do you like about these people they're not from London anyway so you get the idea and this is something that happens every time no matter the country no matter the culture the religion sports uh politics religion just seems to be a contentious issue point where people just cannot get along and they'll rather see the other one die than just give in and part of the reason why this happens is that uh people are never objective when it comes to it it's not politics for example or sports or religion for that matter are not all of these are not rational decisions. People don't make rational decisions when they join a religion. It's just the way you've been conditioned to like that. And you don't actually think outside of that. When you do think of outside of that, you're called a, a, a traitor, a blasphemous infidel. It doesn't matter what name you uh, you get. They want to humiliate you until you probably just sheepishly, sheepishly go back into the fold and they have you where they want you. It's It's a, it's a form of control. But that's the way it is. And that is why uh, in families, having that type of conversation is almost never uh, going to work because no one is listening to any of their arguments, which is an unfortunate thing. And that is why if I rule the world, I would ban religion, politics and sports from family events and conversation.